This video contains commentary. What's good, my dudes? Welcome back to Storytime with your favorite Reddit fairy. My name is Lorna, and today we're getting into some r slash choosing beggars. But that's not all. After that, I'm going to get into some r slash arsehole tags. That's right, so stick around for that. Without further ado, smash that subscribe button, sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. Entitled neighbor expects my gardener to clean her garden for free. Posted by user Fred's Red. This happened recently. I live in a unit complex of 20 units where most of the neighbors know each other or have spoken at one point or another. One of the neighbors, Ben, has a lawnmower and mows everyone's lawns for free, important for later. I've been in isolation because of COVID-19 for the past month and have been getting extra money from the government lately that I don't need. So I decided to put that money to good use and hire a gardener to fix up my front and back garden. The front garden is a complete mess. For the past two weeks, he's been coming and going to fix up my front garden in small increments, not interacting with me directly for obvious reasons. This happened yesterday when my gardener was working on my front garden. One of my neighbors, Jessica, came up to the gardener. I have security cameras outside so that I can see what's going on in the driveway and began complimenting him on his great work. I popped my head out so I can hear what was being said, but they couldn't see me. Yeah, that looks really good. I think you're doing a really nice job. She started getting overly complimentary and I had a sneaking suspicion of what she was getting at. Jessica not knowing that I was around the corner and could hear everything said. You're doing such a good job here. Um, do, do you think that you could work on my garden after you're done here? I don't think OP would mind. As I'm coming around the corner, I say, Hi Jessica, what's up? Jessica realizing she was busted. Oh, hi, OP. Um, well, I was just saying what a good job your gardener has done so far. Oh, do, do you think he'd mind doing my garden as well? I'm sure he wouldn't mind. It's $30 an hour or $300 for the whole day. What? I'm not paying for it. You hired a gardener, so it's your responsibility to do my garden as well. I hired a gardener to do my garden. It's not up to me to pay for your garden to be done as well. But Ben mows the lawn for free. Your gardener should do my backyard for free too. Sorry, Jessica, but if you want a private gardener, you'll have to pay for it like everyone else. But I'm on a disability pension and can't afford that. Clearly you can. I'm on a disability pension too, so don't try that. I spend my money on important things, not the alcohol I see you buying all the time. So unless you're going to pay for his time, please let him get back to work. Jessica huffed and stomped off, and I haven't heard a peep from her since. But give it time. I'm sure she'll be back soon enough to get more things for free. <laughs> so I'm kind of on the fence about this one because he said he didn't even need the money and the government gave him this money. So... If you didn't need it, you'd think you would kind of be a little more generous with other people that are in the same situation as you. But I get it. She's buying alcohol with her money. She could clearly afford it if she didn't do that, maybe. <laughs> it's it's just a little eyebrow raising. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying choosing beg or the OP is the choosing beggar in the story or anything. But there's a little bit of a... If you didn't need it, why are you spending it kind of thing, you know? <laughs> like it could have gone to somebody who actually did need it is all I'm saying. Please don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> all right, my dudes, before I get into the next story, don't forget to smash that like button, tickle the subscribe button a little bit, and ding that bell for all notifications for future videos just like this one. This one is called Literal Begging at Kroger, posted by user Krizzle2663. I'm at Kroger picking up a couple necessities and this guy pushes his cart over to me and asks if I'd help him pay for his stuff because he's homeless and doesn't have any money. By the looks of him, he probably is homeless. He mentions the shelter next to my work and that they've stopped serving meals because of COVID, which I know is true. But then I look at his cart. Lots of Reese's candy, gum, Capri Sun, and White Castle sliders. I ask him why he chose those things. It's not going to fill him up and he'll be hungry so soon afterwards. And he fumbled around and didn't really have an answer. I told him I'd buy him a loaf of bread, some lunch meat, and a box of Capri Sun, but not the other stuff. 
He agrees, and then we go to pick out the meat, and he started in with a... I don't want to offend you, but if someone asked me to help them with food and didn't get them what they had picked, that would weigh on my mind when I went to sleep. I said, I don't know what else you want me to do right now. I'm willing to buy you what I'm willing to buy you, and if you don't want it, I'm going to go ahead and leave. He begrudgingly picked stuff out and then ditched his shopping cart and followed me out to the checkout. Eight dollars to a choosing beggar who wanted me to drop a good thirty-five dollars on his candy and sliders. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to pull a fast one. He probably knew he was caught, probably didn't even need the bread and the lunch meat and all that. He just probably went and smoked a joint because it was 420 yesterday <laughs> and he's got the munchies. <laughs> oh my god, dude, guys, I celebrated 420 all day yesterday. <laughs> Let me know, did you guys celebrate? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your stories. If you have any funny stories, especially, I want to hear those. <laughs> All right, my dudes, let's get into the next story. This one is called, Free Pizza is Not Good Enough, posted by user FDZeno. I live in Cardiff and work as a manager in a pizza place. We're still open for deliveries, but I believe we shouldn't be, though. We have a note on the front door that instructs Deliveroo and Uber Eats drivers to come to the back door to pick up the order. Today, as I was in the office going through some paperwork, I have noticed on the cameras that someone was standing in the back door even though we had no live orders at the moment. I was playing with the idea of a smoke break anyway, so I decided to give myself said smoke break and also at the same time check on the mysterious man too. So I went to the back door, opened it, and there was a homeless man in his late 30s or early 40s. He wasn't smelly or dirty, and when he saw my uniform, he asked me for any spare food that we might have in store. I told him I will check on it once I finish my cigarette. Even though he didn't ask for it, I offered him a cigarette, which he accepted. So we've smoked and chatted a little bit. He genuinely seemed like a normal guy who just got unlucky. After the smoke, I went inside and checked on any excess food, which would have been thrown out anyway. There was a medium margarita, not oven hot, but was only standing for about 30 to 40 minutes. It's in box and was nicely warm. I grabbed the pizza and a bottle of water and made my way back to the back door. I gave him the items. He opened the box, checked it, closed it, looked at me and said, Man, couldn't you make it a large with some toppings like ham or bacon? I was literally speechless. I was expecting some gratitude, but no. I tried to explain to him that I couldn't just make a pizza and hand it out for free, but he was having none of it. In the end, he turned around, took one slice, and tossed the rest on the pavement while going on a rant about how no one is helping him. One question, what's wrong with a free medium margarita? <laughs> oh my god, I mean... That wouldn't be my first choice, but if you're really hungry and you're going around asking for free food, eh, you know, like, okay, maybe there's no meat on it. I think I'm pretty sure margarita is just like, what is it, like basil and tomatoes and like feta cheese or some shit like that? I don't know. But I mean, it's still food. It could still fill you up. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Choosing Bega Jolly, you are at it again. <laughs> Oh my god, how's your day going, my dudes? What are you guys up to? <laughs> Alright, let's get into the next story. This one is called... I don't like brown bread. Posted by user Watermelon AF. Shorter post here. Obligatory mobile, spelling mistakes, formatting issues, blah blah blah. So during all this corona stuff, my boss has decided to set up a table of free groceries and toiletries. There's formula for babies, toilet paper, bleach, fresh veggies and fruits daily, breads, craft dinner, and other non-perishables. He's doing this out of the kindness of his own heart and pocket. Every day, the table is restocked with new stuff. For extra context, we are a pet store, small and local. The table is nothing too big or fancy, but everything is completely free. You don't need to have a pet or buy anything to access the table. If you need it, grab it. So one day, this gentleman came in. He was older and used a cane. Not important, just creating the scene. He asked me about the table. People often ask before taking. Perhaps they feel awkward, I don't know. He walked up to the table after being told that it's okay to grab what he needs. He rummaged through the supplies and grabs a bag of whole wheat bread. He holds it up and then looks at me. 
Do you guys have white bread? I only eat white. Unfortunately, what's on the table is all there is. Sorry about that. Well, you guys should go out and get some. Me, thinking he's joking, I chuckled. Well, there's no need to be rude like I just wanted white bread. I really think you guys should go get white bread. Well, unfortunately, I'm unable to do that. I need to help customers. Who cares? There's no white bread. You guys should always have white bread. I don't like brown bread. I'm really sorry, sir. My boss needs two of us up front at all times. I can't get white bread even if I wanted to. Choosing beggar growls and grabs the bread and storms out of the store. I turn to my coworker who was just as disbelieving as I was. We both laughed a bit before another nicer customer came in. <laughs> it's funny because you almost think it's about to get wholesome or something and then nope, choosing beggar Charlie steps in again. <laughs> I have a question though, like if you went into the pet store, like did, did he think, did he see that they were giving away stuff for free before he went into the pet store or was, was he going into the pet store to get something for his pet? Because it doesn't mention anywhere in the story if he actually bought anything for his pet. So either this tells me a couple things, either this story is made up <laughs> and maybe they are giving away free stuff, but the girl was just or guy or whoever posted this was just bored and decided to make up a story <laughs> or they saw that they were giving away free stuff from outside and came in just for that or they're leaving stuff out <laughs> i don't know what do you guys think <laughs> let me know in the comments below i always want to hear your guys input on things um just in case nobody thinks that i take anyone's uh, advice i I'm really trying not to read the names of the characters before I start doing the voice changes because it just wastes time, I understand. So um, if, let me know if you like it better in this format of me like leaving out when it's like, me says this, choosing beggar says that. You know what I mean? Um, I just tried to start leaving that those little so-and-so says this names out, you know? <laughs> I don't know if I'm making any sense, <laughs> but if I am, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my dudes, uh, let's see. I've got two two more choosing beggar stories to get into. This one is called Sell me your switch now or I'll call the cops. Posted by user Captain Troy 2016. So this happened last year while at the mall waiting for my family to do their shopping. I thought I'd hit up GameStop and see what kind of switch games are available. Then here comes the choosing beggar. He first asked the employee if Nintendo switches were in stock. Unfortunately, they sold out and the choosing beggar got upset. Then he sees my switch cases with my switch. How much for the switch? Uh, it's not for sale. Come on, bro, I'll give you $100. Nintendo's switch usually costs around $299 before tax, so I'm not going to sell him my $320 switch for $100. Sorry, it's not for sale. You're such an asshole, bro. Give it to me or I'm calling the cops. Go ahead. Luckily, one of the employees called security. What seems to be the problem? This asshole isn't selling me his switch. Is this an exchange meet? No, he's just mad because the store didn't have the console on sale. Then he wants to buy my switch for less than what I paid for and I don't want to sell it to him security guard to the choosing beggar. Sir, just come back another day. You can come back if they have them on sale and stop messing with them. He doesn't want to sell his game. I don't want to come back another day. I want a switch now. Then he proceeds to snatch my switch. He fails miserably and falls. The security guard had to escort him out and was kicked out of the mall. There seems to be an awful lot of, of choosing beggar stories of entitled kids trying to, s or, or Karens trying to swipe someone's Nintendo Switch. Why is this such a common occurrence? I think you guys know what I'm thinking in my mind why it's a common occurrence and I'm not going to say it. But if you guys say it in the comments, I'll definitely like it if I agree with it. <laughs> All right, and the last story is called, No, you can't take my child's bike. Hosted by user GFTRGC. 
I kind of have a negative attitude about all of this, I apologize. The wound is still a little fresh. I love giving and helping people normally, but seriously, this makes me understand Scrooge McDuck. So my wife and I decided to clean out the garage to take advantage of quarantine. So we rented a dumpster and started clearing everything out. We have four kids, so we have a lot of junk and old clothes, toys, high chairs, strollers, etc. And it's all in really good condition, as my wife takes really good care of things so that we could resell it later, usually to one of her cousins. She has a very, very large family, so there's almost always someone pregnant. Normally, she'll post the items on Facebook for our friends and family, and then she'll post them for sale on Marketplace, or take them to a second-hand store to try to make a little side cash. With the garage initiative, we decided we would just curb alert all the items for free, and people could come and take whatever they wanted. When I say curb alert, I literally mean they were in a separate group, by the curb, clearly separated from the stuff that would be going back into the garage. This is important. My wife takes a picture of some of the stuff, puts it on Facebook, and then ends up texting a couple of her cousins and friends that she knows could use some stuff. She even goes through the boxes of clothes to pull out some outfits and sizes for them that she thinks they'll like. Above and beyond, for them getting free shit, it's who she is. So, her one cousin rolls up less than an hour after it's posted and says she'll take it all. Now, all of her kids, except one of them, are older than all of ours. So we were a little confused as to why she needed things like a high chair, box of toddler clothes, etc. But whatever. We literally just did not care. She could take them all and sell them for her own profit. We just couldn't care less at this point. So then she starts looking through the other stuff, and I told her that that was the stuff we were keeping. Then she asks if she can have one of our bikes. I told her no, that my kids use them. She asks why we have so many bikes. So I explain that we just got the kids new bikes, but two of our kids aren't quite ready for their new bikes as one is a little too short to ride it comfortably and the other one hasn't learned to ride without training wheels yet. Her response? Teach him to ride without training wheels and give me that bike. I told her no, firmly. She rolled her eyes at me and went back to the curb pile. One of our friends texted my wife and asked if she could hold on to the double stroller for her as she could really use it. They foster kids and just got given a baby along with their two-year-old that she really needs a double stroller. So we tell her cousin, whose youngest child is four, that we're keeping that for a friend. Her response? She ain't here yet. My neighbor really needs a stroller. I tell her no again and take the stroller back up to the other pile. She follows. Whatever. Then she starts back on the bike thing, saying that since she can't have the stroller, I should give her the bike. Again, I firmly tell her that I'm not giving her my son's bike. The conversation goes as follows. But bubs don't have nothing to ride. Okay, but who's bubs? That's what we all just call JJ's little boy. Okay, who's JJ? My neighbor down the road. He's done some work for my father-in-law before. Side note. My father-in-law runs a decently large-scale rental company. He's got close to 50 regular workers, all of which are either family or considered family. None of them are named JJ. Yeah, I don't know JJ, but even if I did, he can't take my son's bike. She goes on to talk about how I could just go buy training wheels for the new bike because they're cheap, and that Bubs is gonna be crushed to not have a bike. I asked why he would be expecting a bike in the first place. This goes on for a solid five minutes before I finally just tell her that she needs to pack up and leave. This is when I finally lost it. Okay, but I need y'all to load my car for me, for real. I just worked an eight-hour shift and then went home and cooked fajitas for the kids. There I am, covered in sweat, garage dust, dumpster funk. After having woken up early to work my eight hours, I work from home, being told that she's too tired to load up the free shit I just gave her. Whatever though, I don't care at this point and start loading up the car, with her teenage daughter sitting in the front seat playing on her phone. And she has the audacity to move my son's bike over to the pile I'm loading from. I ignore it of course and keep loading and then close the tailgate. She starts laughing. <laughs> you forgot something. Get off my son's bike. You can't have it. Oh, come on. You know you're just going to give it to me anyway. Just load it up and let me leave. 
I finally snapped and told her that if she didn't leave, I would unload all of the shit I just loaded and she could leave with none of it. She promptly left. Oh. Ah, why? Why are you the way that you are? Oh, that's so gross. Like, if training wheels are so fucking cheap, then you go buy them, Karen. Like, <laughs> go buy a bike. Go look on, you know, somewhere else for a bike. Like, why are you trying to take advantage of people, let alone your own fucking family? You low-life scum. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be giving her anything. I wouldn't be giving her anything. If she argued with me that long over that bike, I would have been like, fuck you. Get out of here. I'm not giving you shit. <laughs> All right, my dudes, that's all I've got for r slash choosing beggars. Now we're going to get into some r slash asshole tax. This one is called Congratulations, Landlord. You played yourself. Posted by user Assume Battle Poise. Back when I rented my first ever house as a struggling new single parent, I found a perfect little place where I wanted to live. Well, perfect except for the landlord. I was new to renting and short on money, so when I contacted the landlord, I was very clear about asking exactly how much I needed to move in, because I knew I'd barely make it and couldn't handle surprises. The rent was advertised as $1,200, and he said $1,800 to move in. Small town, private ownership. I thought, awesome, he only wants half a month's rent as security deposit. That's super helpful. I moved in on the 1st, then on the 5th. He contacted me and told me I needed to pay that month's rent, $1,200. He had deliberately obscured the fact that the $1,800 was all security deposit, despite how clear I'd been about needing to know all the costs, so I didn't have rent on my very first month. I fought back, pointed out the shitty language in his homemade contract, and told him that he'd have to evict me since I wouldn't have $1,200 to give him for another month. Instead, he caved and gave me a new contract with only a $600 security deposit and a first month's rent paid in full. I knew then that I'd have to keep my eye on him, but since I still loved the place, I stayed. I was there for three years, and while I occasionally had negative interactions with him, they were minor and rare. Eventually, I got married and moved to a bigger house. I gave him plenty of notice and cleaned the place spotlessly, but I knew he was going to find some way to cheat me out of my $600 security deposit. Sure enough, he found every little excuse he could for why this or that thing would have to be updated, fixed, etc. I argued, but arguing with someone when they're holding the money is pretty pointless, especially when the amount is too small to be worth court over. So eventually, our argument turns to haggling, and we settle on him giving me half back. Better than nothing, I figure, and I'll happily be done with it. So he gives me $900. He had forgotten the change in the original deal and gave me half of the original amount he had tried to swindle me for. See you later, jerk. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Sucks to suck. <laughs> Oh my god, I had a landlord that did this ship to me too when I lived in Calgary. Um, I'm, I, I'm trying to remember how much the rent was. I want to say it was like $9.75 a month. Um, and I had a nice view of the mountains and everything. It was, a, it was a nice place, but the landlord was a total dick. Um, tried to hold the entire security deposit because of he said the stove needed to be cleaned um i worked at red lobster at the time i always made my meals at work i never used the stove once when i lived there so i'm like how can you how can you say that i caused all this shit to the stove that i don't even use like i know you're trying to pull a fast one on me but what are you gonna do when you're trying to move across the country you don't have time to sit there and fucking argue with somebody so i got i got screwed out of its security deposit because of that it's bullshit but I'm glad now in the province that I live in, I don't think they're allowed to ask for a security deposit anymore. I think it's just first and last month's rent. I'm pretty sure. I think they can ask for a pet deposit, but not like uh, a full on like security deposit. <laughs> I, again, I could be wrong, but as far as I know, I think that's how it is here. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. I always, <laughs> I always want to be educated if I'm saying something that's not true. <laughs> All right there, my dudes, this is uh, quite a long episode today, so we're going to get into the last story, and this one is called... 
literal absentee do-it-yourself landlord tries to screw me over, loses everything he tried to game from me. Posted by user Cold Snowy Peaked. Once upon a time, when I was young and single and found myself flush with a surplus of cash, I decided to embark upon single male living and found a townhouse for rent in an HOA community that seemed like a pretty decent deal. It was a separate unit with one level that was theoretically ADA, but never got anyone to rent it. It took me two full years to figure out why, and it was the worst absentee landlord in the world. He was headed off to Ecuador to live full-time in his weird yoga retreat thing and chase after young Ecuadorian beach bunnies or something. Imagine every greasy, balding ponytail hippie you ever met, then add complete incompetence to that, and an inherited set of properties that he had slumlorded as a living, but sold off except for one unit at this HOA, his own place. Landlord had hired the property management company that managed the HOA property maintenance, groundskeeping, etc., to rent the place, but insisted on doing the paperwork himself. Since I was the first renter he had for this particular unit, he had lived there previously and was moving to Ecuador, he approved me, had me hand him cash for the cleaning deposit, warning, warning, signed paperwork, that turned out wasn't the paperwork the management company needed, and then flew to his new home in Ecuador, that night. He handed me the key to the townhouse and drove off in a cheap rental car, and the last thing he said to me was, If there's a problem, I expect you to work it out with the management company. I won't be available for a month or so. At this point, klaxons should have been going off in my head. When I walked into the unit, it was trashed. Like, messy frat house moved out trashed. I called his number. Then I called the property management company and said, this isn't cleaned at all. Back and forth went on for a good while, but it was still a house. I should have walked, but I didn't at that point. Eventually, the management company got him to admit he left the unit trashed. I wouldn't move in at all. I was able to show the receipt for the $600 cleaning fee he signed hurriedly for and submit that. So they waived the security deposit they would normally have required and said that they would require landlord to pay it. So all worked out. Three months later, asshole landlord is back in town to pare down his material possessions, i.e. sell shit he left behind. And wouldn't you know it, the water heater in the unit died. I contacted the management company. They contacted him, and he said, I'll take care of it. He showed up one day, broke the lock, getting in. His rationale was that he owned the place so he could break the lock if he wanted to, without putting 24-hour notice up that he was going to be working on it. I got a call at work from a neighbor and drove home as fast as I could to find asshole landlord sputtering as the new water heater ruined two bookshelves worth of hardback books and rare board games. At that point, I had already called the management company and they not only had photographs of asshole landlord's fuck up, but also took him aside and told him I could prosecute him for criminal trespassing. I was furious, but landlord promised he'd get money from his insurance company to fix everything and I'd get replacements for my stuff. Guess what never happened? I eventually rebuilt my collection, but at that point, I was done with him entirely and more or less demanded that the property management company be the only ones involved. Oddly enough, they were pretty much on that too. When I decided to move closer to my work, taking me from up to an hour to get home driving by car to less than five minutes by bicycle, I was torn because, frankly, once I'd figured this asshole's modus operandum for the rental, I could do pretty much whatever so long as he got his check. He never checked email, so if there was an issue, I went through the management company and inevitably they just said, go ahead and take care of it, busted appliance, etc., and take it off the rent. He always sent screaming emails threatening to evict me if he didn't get his full rent payments because he had a shitty building. But I was on a long-term lease, two years, and had locked in what was then above average pricing for the building. But as it went on, it was something like one-third the rent in my area for my place. The $200 jump in monthly rent was one thing, but if I was honest about everything, saving $200 a month in rent meant I was spending two hours a day in traffic and $150 or more in gas. The new place meant I could walk pretty much anywhere. On top of that, 
dealing with asshole landlord over the internet for the past two years was too much. And I knew he'd try to jack my rent $300 above what the place was worth the minute that two years was up. Which was about what I was going to pay for the new place. And the fucker still hadn't given me my money for my books and games that he had ruined. So I made sure to send in the notification exactly on time as per his instructions to the property management company, who, at this point, knew me and knew what was likely to happen when I moved out. And true to form, he did exactly what we all expected him to do. He attempted to claim the cleaning deposit as security, and then said I would have to pay for the damage I caused due to my negligence with the water heater and pay to have the unit recarpeted. There was no carpet anywhere in the house because part of the reason he didn't want to pay for cleaning was because he tore up all the carpets from my unit before I moved in and then decided he could just paint the floor instead. Unfortunately, it was an old hardwood floor and not the subfloor. I had all of his shenanigans documented to a fair thee well. I had a signed document from the landlord along with a signed letter indicating that it was due to his incompetence, as well as the notification and photographs of the damage he had caused trying to fix something outside of his experience. I even had a photograph of him with water spraying him in the face because he tried to solder copper pipe, and when that didn't work, he tried to duct tape it shut. To be clear, I did absolutely no work on his property whatsoever. I called the property management company that he had hired to do all the work, and when he fucked up installing the water heater in my unit and ruined the carpets as well as a bunch of my stuff, I called his insurance agency because he was living in Ecuador and couldn't be bothered to deal with his properties other than to collect a rent check. So when he pulled his now infamous bullshit, I was able to trot out all the documentation the property management company and I had kept and I still had a copy of the insurance claim I had filed with the full list of ruined property and the total he signed and dated that he had in fact collected money from. By this time, I had already moved everything out of the unit except for a cheap old laptop, a folding table, a chair I found in the alleyway, and my cleaning supplies, because I was working from home for a week while packing up my crap and moving out. I sent him an email with the management company CC'd, but also CC'd a friend of mine who worked at a law firm at the time, as the front desk receptionist, but the domain was a well-known law firm in my city and had handled landlord's divorce once upon a time. The email, in legal terms, but TLDR said, So should I send this letter of demand to the insurance company? Because I'm confused, and as I recall, you still owe me somewhere between $1,000 and $1,200 in personal property damages you never paid due to your mishandling of the water heater installation, and thus, the full list of other landlord bullshit. Should I contact your property company and insurance agent as per your standing instructions? Five minutes after I sent that email, I got a call from the property management company saying that they would take care of everything from that point on, and that if I hadn't heard from them by Thursday, to expect courier documents on Friday morning. Friday morning, I woke up to a courier hand-delivering me a $4,250 check and an itemized receipt for everything the landlord had tried to screw me over on. It included the cleaning fee, but surprisingly also the standard security deposit and the owed money for damages that he had received from the insurance company but never paid me, and a full refund of my last month's rent. I found out about four years later that the HOA had a lien on the property for a year, but couldn't start foreclosure until I moved out, so they backdated me and refunded my rent check. Turns out, asshole landlord was pocketing the rent, but hadn't paid utilities or HOA dues for six months, which is handled through the property management company. So the HOA foreclosed on the unit, the property management company got 15%, and the place sold for $600,000 after they hired a condo flipper. I get the impression they were all just sitting there, hovering waiting for me to hand over the keys to the property management company, and then the minute I was out the door, they were filing paperwork and lawsuits and saying, Go, go, go! Get the renter completely clear of this! No liens! No liens! Because if I could have shown that the owner still owed me any money at all, I could theoretically tie up the repo of the unit. Asshole landlord tried to sue them, but for some reason didn't want to leave Ecuador. I'd like to imagine it was a warrant for his arrest for insurance fraud, but still. Oh, that, 
Wow, can you imagine? And I thought I had it bad with that <laughs> the one that kept my security deposit. Jesus Christ. I mean, I kind of did have another asshole landlady. She was great at first, like super awesome. And then I think she made it up, but she's like, I'm going through a divorce and I need to go move back into my condo. So you have to move out. And I'm like, uh, she she tried to give me notice, but uh, not according to our labor or sorry, a rental, you know, um, tenant laws and all that. She tried to get me out like in less than a month. I'm like, uh, no, sorry, bitch. That's not how it works. <laughs> like it's two months. It's um, 60 days or was it 90 days or 60? I don't know. One of the two. But <clears throat> from the day posted on the, the letter, you know what I'm saying? And it was like. It was already past the first of the month and she's like, I need you out by the first of next month. And I'm like, yeah, no, bitch, that's not happening. <laughs> like, and then I find out like due to our tenant laws, if you're going to repossess, uh, like if you're going to evict somebody and move in to your own property, you have to stay there for so long after um, before selling it. Otherwise, that's against the law. You can't do that. But she pulled that shit. I found out too late but she pulled that shit she wasn't wanting to move in at all i think she made up the whole shit about getting a divorce with her husband she just wanted the money she sold the place and she didn't want the upkeep anymore i don't know what she wanted but she pulled that shit but nothing like this fuck this guy that guy <laughs> stay in ecuador <laughs> jesus all right, my dudes, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this extra super long episode. If you did, please smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on all notifications for future videos just like this one. There's supposed to be some kind of like shooting star bullshit going on tonight after midnight. So I'm going to make my way down to the lake tonight at midnight and see if I can catch some shooting stars and like meteors and stuff. It's going to be fun. Also, uh, I, I have had my Smule link in the description for a while now. You guys, my face reveal has been sitting right under your noses this whole entire time. Only a few of you have, have uh, stumbled upon it. But um, yeah, if you guys want to come sing with me, I got my profile down below here. Here's a video of me taking advantage of this fun app. I have nothing to do with Smule. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just really fucking love to sing. So if you do too, come sing with me, my dudes. <laughs> all right, my dudes, all the stories are in the description. As always, check them out. Give them some love, some upvotes, all that fun stuff. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, my dudes. <laughs>